After many hours of tweaking and failing, I finally cracked the perfect setup for the Norwegian rally. Stick around to find out. During my testing, I found that tweaking my Swedish setup to match the elements that you face in Norway just wasn't cutting it. Norway has some very fast straights, then out of nowhere you face some very tight sections. Needless to say, there is no margin for error on the icy snow. It drives completely different to the other snow covered rally in Sweden. With all that noted, I started from scratch to build this setup for you, tweaking each setting as I went. Now I know most of you clicked on this video to see the setup. In this one I am going to explain in a bit more detail why I came up with this particular setup and why I struggled making it. I almost felt like these Norwegian roads that I wanted the back of the car to be looser but in doing so would make the front end of the car very vague and understeering. In the end I came to the conclusion that a more well balanced car worked better. The first things first, the basic to any setup is do you want a car that understeers or do you want one that oversteers? Most of your setups will want to be on the oversteer side. And just to keep everyone included, understeer is when you turn the steering wheel but you continue straight forward and oversteer is when you turn in and the rear try to overtake the front. How to make changes to help with turning in. For more of a responsive front end, you have more toe out. It will give you a better turn in, but this will cause the vague understeer that I was talking about. The more rear camber you set, the more traction you will have in the corners, but it will reduce your straight line traction. Now in Norway, I don't see this being much of a problem. As for the rear toe, the more in it is, the more stable your car is coming out of the corners. Having it further out will improve your mid-corner rotation. At the Scandinavian rally, mid-corner rotation is important. Moving on to our differential settings. These are very simple. A higher setting will give you better straight line traction and braking traction, but brings the cost of having understeer through the corner, especially through the mid of the corner. So that's why I mentioned your mid corner rotation in your alignment needs to be spot on. And then the last setting in your differential, which is also good for keeping understeer to a minimum, is just setting your preload lower. This will keep the diff open when there's no torque going through the drive shaft, but having it too high will also induce understeer. I could spend hours talking about dampening and suspension. What I have provided for you is how I like the springs to react when I am driving. You see, I like a softer car. I find it easier to move the weight around of the vehicle. So when I am taking multiple corners, one after another, I can get the car turned in better just by using the weight as a rotation tool. I don't like a stiff setup as a few things can happen especially on road and stages where you do not want these negative things to happen. The handling performance and grip on bumpy and uneven surfaces becomes an additional problem that we could do without whilst trying to navigate a rally. Having stiff anti-roll bars decreases the inside tyre's contact with the ground therefore offering less grip. When in a rally we need some level of grip otherwise into a tree we go. Brakes are another subjective one. We never want it to be easy to lock up, but we also still need enough pressure to stop the car fast. I find anywhere from 3000 to 3500 is a good starting point. With the brake bias, just because it's snow and ice, I will start around 57% and go up to about 67%. Handbrakes on ice I feel a high pressure is better, whereas on tarmac it's not needed to be so high. So just before we close out this video, I would like to ask if any of you do use this setup if you could give me some feedback on it with a comment below or by joining our new discord link for which is in the description but like i said at the start of the video i really did struggle trying to find something that will work with the vast majority of people i don't make these setups because they are best for me i always try to make them so somebody who has never rallied before can put the setup on and set fast times also, before the new year, I asked if we could hit 75 subscribers and you absolutely smashed it. Before we got close to the new year tick over, you got us to 85. I am so thankful for everyone who has subscribed and this year I will be trying my hardest to create the best content for you all. To 
keep you entertained, to help you with your sim racing skills and to create a community of like-minded individuals who want to learn and pass on their own intelligence to others so we can be as fast as possible on whatever sim we decide to race on. And that is all for today. Feel free to come over to our Discord and Hangout. I will be looking at making some WRC events for us all to compete in. I might even source some prizes for the winners. But thanks again for watching. I hope this video has helped with understanding certain areas of the setup. I will create more setups and guides for other locations if you just don't want to mess about with the setup screen. So thanks again. I will see you back here very soon. Till the next time.